Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you Gabor Demeter, who is a senior research fellow at the Research Center for Humanities Institute of History in Budapest, Hungary, and works for the Department of Southeast European History. He holds a PhD degree in history and earth sciences as well. He habilitated in 2017 in historical geography. His main research interests include diplomatic history, Austria-Hungary and the Balkans, economic and social history of Hungary and the Balkan Peninsula, historical geography like migration or urban processes. He has won several prizes and got many scholarships like the Junior Prima Prize in 2009, which is an award of the private economic sector for scientific activity. Uh, he could work with the help of the Boya Janos Research Scholarship of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences two times. Uh, he who had an Augustin Hirschvogel Fellowship of the Leibniz Institute für Ost- und Südosteuropa Forschung in Regensburg. He had uh, the special award of the Secretary of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences for his research activities and the award of the president of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences for his research activities as well. And he got the Boyai medal too. His language skills are quite impressive. He speaks or at least reads Hungarian, English, Bulgarian, German, French, Romanian, Serbian, Croatian, Macedonian, Latin, ancient Greek, Turkish, and Osmanli. He's the editorial secretary of the Hungarian Historical Review the secretary of the Hungarian Bulgarian and the Hungarian Macedonian Joint Academy Commission of Historians, a member of the Hungarian Russian Joint Academy Commission of Historians, a member of the Hungarian Academy Sciences Committee of Historical Geography and the Committee of Economic History. He's a member of uh, Hungarian and foreign journals like Történeti Földrajzi Körzlemények, the Economic Historical Yearbook or Makedonsky Preglet. His major publications include a historical geographical atlas of Hungary for the analysis of socioeconomic phenomena, a study in the theory and practice of destabilization, violence and strategies of survival in Ottoman Macedonia between 1903-1913, which was written with Christian Choplar Dagovic as a co-author, Diplomatic struggle for supremacy over the Balkan Peninsula between 1878 and 1914. Essays on Ottoman modernization, industrialization, welfare and military reform. And the role of ethnic mapping in nation building and its influence on political decision making across the Balkan Peninsula between 1840 and 1914. Gabor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ivan, for the thorough introduction. Um, I'm very pleased to be here and to share my knowledge about a topic which is much interested for me. Um, Dear audience, dear Ivan, without further ado, I start my presentation. I'm going to speak about a hotspot of the Balkan Peninsula, uh, which is Macedonia. The Balkan Peninsula is <clears throat> still among the unstable regions of Europe, and one of its hotspots is Macedonia, being in crossfire of its neighbors constantly. I would start with uh, four relatively new events for news. Um, some will highlight the problems of international relation, relations between Macedonia and its neighbors, while others refer to the seriousness of internal situation in Macedonia. The 13th session of the Joint Macedonian-Bulgarian History Commission dealing with the content of Macedonian history school books uh, was unable to settle the long disputed questions regarding the interpretation of Middle Ages uh, or the role of Gotsedelchev in both countries' history. Uh, probably you may see in the first slide on the um, bottom left side, the statue erected in Skopje. Um, illustrating the national hero of Macedonians and Bulgarians as well, Gotsedelchev. 
This draws the attention that instead of uh, in creating shared pasts, the expropriation of past is still in practice. The question is what is behind this event? Um, on, 20, on 2020, November, after a video meeting of European affairs ministers, Bulgaria announced that it would veto the opening of EU accession talks with North Macedonia due to the failure of the Skopje administration to, to handle some identity questions concerning uh, Sofia. First of all, um, Sofia demands that the term Macedonian language shouldn't be used in any EU negotiation framework document um, because Bulgaria considers the Macedonian language to be merely a dialect of the Bulgarian language. Secondly, Bulgaria has consistently asked North Macedonia to, to acknowledge the historically Bulgarian origin of the Macedonian nation, since Bulgaria considers that there's no distinct Macedonian nation. It is only an artificial creation of the Yugoslav communists in the aftermath of the Second World War. And last, but not least, uh, Sofia insists that Skopje should give up its claim for the official recognition of Macedonian minority in Bulgaria, whereas it should not impede those Macedonian citizens who self-identify as Bulgarians from doing so. So this is the first news that might shock the, uh, the audience. And the second one is um, that the North Macedonian population census has been postponed again, and uh, this time due to the pandemic situation. Uniquely in Europe, no census was ex executed in Macedonia in the last two decades. The last one in 2002 uh, revealed that the state cannot be considered a homogeneous nation state. Um, and while the events between 1999 and the year 2000, when Albanian rebels supported by the Kosovars almost tore the state apart, uh, revealed that Macedonia also suffered from internal dichotomies besides the external political tensions between the former Yugoslavian Republic and its uh, neighbors. Uh, a common belief is that uh, the subsequent censuses are postponed again and again due to the fear of the results. For a long time, demographic tendencies were favorable for the Albanians and any modification in the ethnic proportions could lead to the modification of the fragile political status quo between the Albanian and Macedonian nations in Macedonia. And the shocking experience at the turn of the new millennium brought a new political consensus with the increasing political role of Albanians and the quasi duplication of state administration. Um, however, both Albanians and the rightest, uh, rightest Macedonians were unsatisfied uh, with this appeasement. The favorable demographic tendencies for Albanians were counterbalanced uh, by the fact that many Albanians and not only the Kosovo refugees are due to poverty to work abroad. Um, and these uh, workers were not counted in the next census in 2011, and this led to the resignation of the census committee. So up to now, we, we could rely only on the last census uh, executed in 2002. And if you observe the map on the left, you will see that in the northernmost and northeastern parts, northwestern parts of uh, Macedonia, there's a huge uh, population speaking Albanian and being Muslim. And it is very interesting that uh, around the uh, capital city Skopje, there's also a huge amount of uh, ethnic Albanians living in the surrounding of the capital city. Um, in year 2000, there were more than half a million uh, inhabitants uh, who claimed themselves as Albanians. And in they, they constituted the majority in 28 uh, districts. Mm. Uh, there were even 12 districts where their um, proportion exceeded 80%. On the top right of the 
slide, you can see a detailed map created by Joët Bortlik, a cartographer and a lecturer, a professor of the Atush University. You can see that uh, Albanians live in outskirts of Skopje, in the center of Skopje, and in north northwestern parts of uh, the country. And what is more important and more interesting, in the next slide, you can see uh, that there are um, regions and districts uh, which uh, reached Albanian majority only in the last decades, and this is especially characteristic for the, the region around Skopje, the capital city. Uh, you can see it on the left picture. This map was also created by Zod Botlik, and there are picture in the right shows uh, the increase or decrease in number of uh, Albanians. Uh, red colors indicate uh, uh, increase, high increase uh, in the last decades before uh, the last population census. Uh, red color indicates an, an increase of more than 15%. So this is another uh, topic that, that is worth further discussion. The problem is not only that due to the lack of data estimations put to the proportions of Albanians ranging from 25% to 35%, but also that political movements among Albanians and Macedonians are also organized along these fault lines. Uh, and it causes a revival of nationalism. And since these political parties can obtain moral and financial support from abroad, uh, this brings the threat of further destabilization for the state. Uh, if this fragile equilibrium or stalemate is disturbed. Uh, the third uh, news that is worth discussion. Uh, latest rumors about the proposal on redrawing the borders of the Balkans, especially of Bosnia and Herzegovina, attributed to the Slovenian Prime Minister Janez Janša, were refuted recently uh, by the major or major political factors in North Macedonia. Uh, the opposition parties, led by Christian Mitskovsky, or the Minister of Foreign Affairs, affairs, we are Osman, and even the president of the state all concluded that such proposals would only stir tensions and lead to violence. And the only solution that could bring a relief, a relief and solve the problems is the acceleration of EU accession of the whole region, not only of Macedonia. This short report highlights the fears and hopes of politicians of the region. Um, first, behind these re reactions, there's the constant fear that the idea of dismembering Macedonia can emerge too among these proposals. Um, furthermore, these official communications of diplomats indirectly urge for the acceleration of negotiations and then EU intervention to, to remove the, the possibility of a Bulgarian veto as well. So to sum it up, the 100-year-old dream of the independent state of Macedonian Slavs is in danger again, as it happened many times in history. Therefore, it is worth tracing the Macedonian problem in detail down to its roots. So I'm going to speak about the historical roots from now on. Uh, the Macedonian problem has long historical roots and can be investigated from several aspects from geopolitical to etymological, from geographical to historical, and it is also a national question as well. Uh, we start with the geopolitical concept, as you can see uh, in the next slide. From geopolitical aspects, it is evident that the region called Macedonia in the 19th century lies in the intersection of trade routes and thus the intersection of political interests. The two major trade routes should be mentioned, the uh, vardar morava axis, and this is a north-south uh, axis, uh, con uh, which continues uh, the flow of river Danube and can reach, uh, merchandise can reach Salonika. And the other one is the Via Natria, uh, ranging from Albania to Constantinople and Macedonia, or the term um, that covers a region called Macedonia, uh, is in the intersection of these routes. 
Uh, in fact, the region functioned as a buffer zone between the aspiration of the newborn nation states in the 19th century, seceding from the Ottoman Empire, and this had a serious impact on the development of Macedonian identity and self-consciousness as well. Uh, the Balkan Peninsula had three vital geographical points to control, uh, which attracted the powers and the small states too. And these were the, the Straits, the Dardanelles and Bosphorus, uh, Salonika as the major port, major uh, economic maritime outlet, and the Valona zone in the southern part of uh, Epirus, Albania, which has a strategic key role in uh, blocking the Otranto Straits. And each of the small states and each of the powers tried to secure an outlet for themselves in the 19th century by acquiring uh, one of these three major uh, points. For example, Serbia was a landlocked country, a barrier to Austrian pretension to the south. It had territorial pretensions against Austrian Turkey. It was bordered by a power. It had no maritime outlet. Um, uh, in case of Bulgaria, it had no entrance to open seas. It had territorial pretensions against Turkey. Uh, it it was a threat and a gateway to the Straits. It had no common joint boundaries with the power. So each of these newborn states has their own specifics, uh, which uh, influence the situation. The penetration of the two heartland countries, if I may use these geopolitical terms of Mekinder, Austria-Hungary and Russia, uh, led through natural waterways and railways to these three mentioned key points of the Balkan Peninsula. The lighter colors indicate um, the penetration routes of Russia. Some of the railways were never built in the era discussed. But uh, as you can see, it could uh, lead from Odessa to, to Saloniki through Bulgaria and Romania, or there was the plan of the uh, Danubian Serbian railway to, to counterbalance the Austrian uh, penetration to the thousand, southern part of the Balkans towards Saloniki, which is called in historical uh, literature the Dranna Salonika. Austrians tried to secure their political and economical interests uh, through a proposed railway built, to be built along the Adriatic, which required the, the control of Albanian parts of the region. Uh, there was the <clears throat> first idea to secure the Morava Vardar axis and reach Saloniki. Uh, but at the end of the 19th century, when Serbia from an ally turned to be an inimical uh, state and this failed. And there was also a third way through Romania and Bulgaria. So these uh, ideas all influenced the, um, the alliance politics of the great powers. And of course, this influenced the position of Macedonia, Macedonian regions as well. The term Macedonia also involves several problems. First is the name itself. The second, it's territorial extension, it's territorial coverage. Although many languages make difference between the historical ancient Macedonia and the present day Macedonia by pronouncing K and C in these two terms, that way emphasizing the historical discontinuity between the two terms and consequently the two nations, the term itself is still a provocation the Greeks, for example, who consider themselves as a hereditary of the traditions of ancient Macedonia. Um, other nations do not make distinctions between the two terms. In, hung in Hungary, for example, Macedonia was used for a long time for both historical entities. 
the local inhabitants of North Macedonia also call it Macedonia. The Bulgarian journal Makedonski Pregled also pronounces K in its title, although it focuses on the history of Slavs uh, in Macedonia. The Nolens Volens provocation is even greater if the flag of uh, Macedonia between 1992 and 1995 is involved too, because it symbolized an ancient treasure, the Star of Vergina, connected to the ancient Macedons, and the treasure was found in, in Greece itself. And though the present day flag, you can see it on the um, right in the right position, in the bottom right position. And though the present day flag is used to illustrate the symbolize the rising sun, it still resembles a bit to its predecessor. The geographical extension of Macedonia is also a matter of discussion and a source of constant debates that even forced the country to change its name recently. Um, Macedonia can be defined as a geographical, historical, administrative, and political entity too, but unfortunately the area of these different approaches uh, did not match in history. The historical core of ancient Macedonia was the Bay of Terme in today's South Macedonia, located in Greece. Uh, the term was rarely used uh, before the middle of the 19th century, and its usage was even prohibited by the Ottoman authorities. Uh, it usually covered the area of the Vilayet of Monastir, Vilayet of Saloniki, and partly the Kosovo Vilayet, uh, which was larger than present-day Kosovo. So it does not even fit the existing administrative picture of that time of that era. Geographically, Macedonia refers to the catchment area of the Vardar, River Vardar and its tributaries. Areas <clears throat> along the Haliakmon and Nestos River lie outside the boundary of Macedonia if it is defined in geographical terms. The idea of creating and applying the term was partly to generate some kind of local regional identity and territorial uh, administrative boundary for the Slavs living in the region under Ottoman rule, thus separating Macedonia from other regions under formation, for example, from Albania, whose territorial coverage also overlapped uh, with that of Macedonia. After 1878 and 1881, when Thessaly was occupied by Greece and the uh, Sanjak of Novi Pazar was occupied by Austria-Hungary, eh, the boundaries of Macedonia became more concrete. On the other hand, from the aspect of powers in the 1870s, the term was maintained for a political region where Russian influence has to be minimized, partly to the already mentioned uh, idea of the Drangnach Salonika. Uh, despite these problems with the term, uh, even powers used it in diplomatic uh, talks, uh, for example, during the execution of Macedonian reforms after the failure of the Indian uprising in 1903. Um, but not even the famous Mustag reform process in 1903 did cover the whole area defined previously as Macedonia. Thus, Macedonia uh, as an administrative region did not exist. It was merely a geographical and a political term whose boundaries were quite unconsolidated. Greeks usually omitted the Kosovo Vilayet from the term because its incorporation would mean uh, the preponderance of Slavic speakers uh, and uh, the population that refuses uh, the patriarchate of Constantinople and claim themselves to be exarchists. They identified themselves with the Bulgarian National Church established in 1870. Uh, and nevertheless, uh, this would decrease uh, uh, Greek influence over this part of the Balkan Peninsula. Uh, Nonetheless, the Bulgarian and Serbian and local Macedonian population consider the southern part of Kosovo Vilayet as a part, as an integral part of Macedonia, as you can see it uh, in the slide. Uh, 
In the 1930s, when the administrative structure of the Kingdom of the Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes was modified uh, and Banovinos were created, the whole of Kosovo was attached to Macedonia called Vardar Banovina. And this was the first administrative uh, entity that incorporated uh, at least a larger part of Macedonia and had some kind of uh, uh, self government. Uh, in this picture, you can see uh, the, the term Macedonia as uh, defined by the leaders of uh, the Macedonian national movement, Krstemi Sirkov and Dmitry Pavle Chupovsky. Uh, the problem even aggravated further uh, after the Balkan Wars of 1912-1913 when the Ottoman Macedonian region was dismembered between the winners, the Serbs occupied the northern parts, the Bulgarians the eastern part, and the Greeks the southern regions dominated by the followers of the Greek Patriarchate, but they were not only Greeks, but Slavic speakers as well. And of course, both uh, Bulgaria and Serbia had territorial pretensions on these regions. And thus, it is not surprising that uh, Greeks protested against even the name of former Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia uh, after the collapse of former Yugoslavia. Um, because they think uh, it not only took away a part of Greek past, as Greeks perceived, but the name implicitly invoked revisionism, too. The thought of revisionism was feared. Uh, Greece even vetoed the NATO accession of the state because of these problems. North Macedonia became a NATO member only after a change in its name uh, due to the Prespa Convention of uh, 2000. Uh, 18, and this required a change in the constitution of Macedonia, uh, cooperation of, uh, of members of parliament of 66% uh, of the members of parliament to reach this, and this was just uh, acquired. Even the Greek ratification of the change uh, was a series of internal political bargain between the parties to, to secure the necessary votes. And of course, these problems lead us to the question, who is a Macedonian? What are the distinctive features of Macedonians? And what is the basis of Macedonian identity compared to the neighboring state's identity and compared to the neighboring state's perception on Macedonian identity? The first approach claimed that everybody, regardless of faith or language, who lives in the area of the three vilayets and who is not a member of the oppress oppressive government or administration is considered Macedonian either being Slav, Greek, Vlach, or, or Albanian. This approach slowly vanished as national propaganda of the neighboring states uh, increased. The second idea claims that Macedonian Slavs constitute a separate nation, emphasizing the difference between Serbs, Bulgarians, and Macedonians. This was advertised by the uh, persons mentioned, uh, Dmitry Povsky, Krstemi Sirkov, newspapers like Macedonsky Golos, and the so-called autonomous left wing of the internal Macedonian revolutionary organization led by, for example, Yana Sandansky, which was composed of freedom fighters or terrorists, uh, depending from the viewpoints. Contrary to this, the Serbs, for example, the geographer, the famous geographer Tzvi, usually claimed that Macedonian Slavs were a mass of unconscious people who has to be organized as a nation, uh, while the traditional customs resemble the Serbs, that of the Serbs. This theory of national indifference or nationalism driven by particular self-interest is still abundant in postmodern historiography, and this challenges the thesis of national history writing. For example, in the case of the case of ethnic conflicts, uh, better to say, ethnicized conflicts, which we will discuss later in details. Why national history writing usually claim that nation is an old, organic, and valuable reference system. Others claim that nation is a nine, is an artificial construction of the 19th century middle class. Indeed, uh, it wears territorial aspirations of the small states, 
under the aegis of national Darwinism. National Darwinism claims that nation state is the ultimate and most developed form of statehood. Uh, this was an anti-imperial approach, uh, stating that empires are absolute formations and natural boundaries are not physical, geographical, or economic boundaries, rather ethnic boundaries of a nation. And the struggle for nation state is a natural and positive phenomenon, even if clashes cause wars, because these wars are justifiable wars, in fact. But even for national Darwinism, Macedonia was an unfriendly and complex terrain with the obscureness of the term and the quickly changing national self-consciousness. Uh, and of course, for another nation, the Bulgarians, it was evident based on either religious or linguistic or political or historical aspects that Macedonian Slavs living in ancient regions are Bulgarians, in fact. They founded their theory on the basis, and present-day Bulgarian historiography still holds this thesis, that first, many Macedonian Slavs decided to be the follower of the Exarchate Bulgarian National Church uh, after its foundation in 1870, which functioned as a proto-state, in fact, with um, many rights. Um, and villages abandoned the Patriarchate until it was banned by Ottoman authorities. So uh, these Macedonian Slavs can be identified with Greeks or Slavs. Second, these areas were considered as the part of Greater Bulgaria established by Russia in San Stefano, as you can see it on this slide. And you can see two uh, personalities of this era, Count Andrashi, uh, the Joint Minister of Foreign Affairs of Austria-Hungary, and Count Ignatyev, uh, uh, Ambassador of Russia to Constantinople, uh, who were the two great opponents. One uh, uh, has uh, had a constant fear of pan-Slavism and wanted to hinder the creation of a greater Slavic state, that was Count Andrashi, while the other wanted to create a great Slavic state to promote the Russian penetration into the peninsula. And this map shows the bargain, bargain between Austria-Hungary and Russia in uh, 18. 78, which uh, reduced uh, the territorial boundaries of um, the established Bulgaria, rendering Macedonia back to the to under Ottoman authority with the promise of reforms, which were never executed uh, in these decades. An uh, argument of Bulgarian nationalists is that the emissaries of Macedonia were present in Ternovo and accepted the Bulgarian constitution, which implies that they identified themselves with the Bulgarians of that era. Um, I emphasize the religious, the linguistic, cultural, and historical aspects as determinants, components, or dimensions of identity, because the contemporary nationalistic approach in the 19th century was based on these. Even British diplomats took these four aspects with different weight into consideration when discussing the problems of the Balkan Peninsula in that time. However, this does not mean that delimiting a nation became easier. On the contrary, some focused on one aspect, which flattened the multidimensional identity, and it caused controversial uh, results and contradictions. Others tried to combine the features and dimensions, which resulted in the multiplication of categories, and the boundaries between groups uh, became blurred, and, and they even un and Diplomats were unable to, to delimit these uh, national boundaries um, properly. The same problems were abundant both among the powers and the small states. And now I'm going to show some uh, ethnic maps of the era. Uh, just some uh, examples. Uh, you can see uh, the map created by the famous Austrian cartographer Sachs, who combined the religion and language uh, and tried to illustrate both, thus creating 21 categories, uh, inventing the Macedonian ethnic salad indeed. According to the mentioned Serbian speech, uh, sex tore nations into atoms, uh, while this served uh, the political interest of Austria-Hungary. 
imperial cartography always tried to diminish the significance of nations and limit uh, the territorial coverage of one nation to a modest uh, extension. On the contrary, the German Heinrich Kiepert, whose map was used in Berlin uh, in 1878, focused on only one aspect, that was the language. And this led to the disappearance of Muslim Slavs from the maps, uh, and it resulted in their partition between linguistic nations. The, this practice was sharply criticized by imperial cartographer. On the other hand, Ottoman statisticians deliberately treated all Muslims together in one category during the censuses to secure a Muslim preponderance owing to the rivalry uh, between the Christ Christians. This means that the formerly unified Christian millet was splintered between the newborn nations and this helped the uh, Ottomans to, to maintain the relative preponderance uh, if all Muslims were incorporated in one category, uh, the Muslim millet. Comparing these two maps I'm trying to show you, you can see uh, the changes of interpretations uh, within 20 years, while the first map indicates a uh, population speaking Bulgarian in the Macedonian regions. The next one, the map for Mürsteg, uh, is in fact a pro-Macedonian approach. Uh, the ethnic Bulgarians and ethnic Macedonians are indicated by different colors. And this is usually of political reasons of Austria-Hungary, which that time wanted to limit the territorial uh, aggrandizement of Bulgaria and to secure uh, economic outlet towards the south and to, to promote Serbian interests in the south as well. The map on the right illustrates a uh, uh, partition plan of the Balkan Peninsula. Uh, in fact, uh, the hedge uh, indicates uh, spheres of influence uh, for Russia and Austria-Hungary at the end of the 1890s uh, during the so-called koluchowski muraviev agreement. While the left map uh, found at the Haushofustadts Archive in Vienna uh, indicates uh, regions uh, inhabited by uh, majorities. So the white color uh, represents not only uninhabited regions, but regions where no ethnic majority can be found in Macedonia. Furthermore, its colors are also, its colors also have tactical meaning because the Muslims are indicated by this very harsh red color. And this was another uh, technique to, to suppress uh, Macedonian Slavs or Bulgarians. Anyway, this map also separates the two nations from each other. Uh, the Bulgarians are indicated by purple, while the Macedonian Slavs are indicated by this light uh, greenish blue. So the Greeks considered Greek everyone who followed the patriarchate in Constantinople, regardless of the spoken languages. Thus their ethnic approach was dominated by religious affiliations and not by a linguistic one. The Bulgarians advertised the primate of language. Uh, so not only the followers of the Exarchate were considered Bulgarian, but Muslim Slavs, Pomaks, and the Slavic speakers of the patriarchate too. The Albanian nation was created as a linguistic nation where religious differences were of secondary importance, unlike, for example, in the case of Croats and Serbs. Uh, the Serbs focused on the similarity of local traditions. And as for the linguistic question, the Serbian linguist, Alexander Belic, uh, described the Southern Slavic as a continuum of dialects, uh, where no stable boundaries can be delimited. Uh, this slide, the right side of the slide, indicates the dialects identified by Beich, and this is another map created by Short Bortley. Um, however, this might be true on the one hand, uh, but in the other, the Serbs rather used 
this theory to expand the zone of Serbian aspirations to Macedonia and even to the western part of Bulgaria, uh, even down to Sofia. It is also claimed by the Serbs that the Slavs joined the Exarchate because of liturgy in their mother tongue and because of cheap schooling, not because of being originally Bulgarians. In fact, it was the Exarchate's teachers who uh, had sown the seeds of Bulgarian nationalism among Slavic peasants, while uh, it was the Serbian one that spread in the northern part of Kosovo. Furthermore, the Serbs also argued that the term Bulgari used by the local people has no ethnic meaning. It simply refers to peasant, Raya, in fact. As a consequence of Bulgarian influence, there was a gradual approximation between Macedonian and Slavic dialects and the Bulgarian uh, official uh, dialect between 1870 and 1910. After the Serbs acquired much of the territory, Serb, Serbian words infiltrated into the language. However, the grammar remained quite similar to the Bulgarian. While a complete Serbianization failed, the creation of a Macedonian identity through the establishment of the Macedonian Republic within Yugoslavia was much fruitful compared to the previous efforts, which were characterized by the influx of uh, Serbian settlers. I tried to, yes, this is the map, which uh, on the right indicates the, the, the Serbian settlements. The settlers indicated by dark gray dots or, or dark gray or black squares. While the first Yugoslavia treated the area as a conquested zone, the Serbian constitution, for example, was not applied in 1913. The relationship drastically changed after 1941, as the former policy was proven totally unfruitful. And not only the small states had different perceptions and interpretations on Macedonia, but one should not forget that even the powers contributed to the destabilization of the region. Despite their humanitarian intervention after uh, 1903, when they arbitrarily re reclassified the ethnic affiliations of the population, depending on their political interest, and I'm going to uh, show some of the ethnic maps on Macedonia, uh, this one uh, on the left shows a Greek one, yellow color indicate Greeks according to the Greek statistics, including um, patriarchist Slavic speaking population as well. While the map uh, on the right indicates a Serbian version, uh, almost everybody uh, has uh, Serbian ethnic affiliation according to this map of Spiridon Gopcevic. Uh, even there are, the Muslims are classified as, as Muslim Serbs. And of course, uh, Gopcevic could make this map because of Austrian support, because that time Serbia was an, an ally of Austria-Hungary. In that year, the uh, Treaty of Alliance was renewed and Austria-Hungary promised free hand to Serbia in the south if it refrains uh, from its aspirations in Bosnia-Herzegovina. So that's the background story behind this map. And of course, there are other maps. This shows Muslim preponderance in almost all uh, Sanjaks based on the official Muslim statistics, which uh, included uh, every Muslims into one category. Though I try to separate Muslim Albanians, Muslim Slavs, uh, and Muslim Ottomans on this map, but the preponderance of green colors are, are still surprising. And of course, there are the Austrian maps, for example, which I have already talked about. Talked about. Um, this is the map of Meinhard, in, uh, an Austrian railway engineer in, uh, at the turn of the century, which indicates Bulgarians in Macedonia, not Macedonian Slavic speakers, uh, compared to the previous maps I, I showed, which indicated Macedonian Slavs. And there are very uh, professional maps regarding their outlook. This is a Bulgarian one, which indicates uh, uh, patriarchy Slavic uh, preponderance in Southern Macedonia that was acquired, obtained later by Greece. 
so we cannot see the, the preponderance of yellow colors at all. And of course, ethnic mapping was also uh, used by uh, politicians for political purposes. This slide shows the changes of ideas of Johann Switch within a decade. Um, his first maps indicated uh, Slavdom uh, with the same color as the unity. Then he detached uh, Macedonian Slavs just to hinder the Bulgarian uh, aspirations to Macedonia. And then even according to the ideas of Belic, uh, the Serbian, the boundaries of the Serbian dialects uh, were extrapolated, were increased towards Sofia and towards Saloniki as well. And in the right side of the slide, we can see uh, these dominant Serbian um, cartographers and uh, linguists who influenced uh, the Serbian perception of, of Macedonia. This is another map, a uh, Bulgarian one, uh, before the outbreak of the Great Eastern Crisis. Uh, it was created based on the data of the Bulgarian Exarchate, and it indicates, uh, of course, Bulgarians everywhere in Macedonia, and, and you can't even find Greeks, and the Muslims are, are very subordinated. And of course, there's another problem, uh, which we already which we have already discussed in the beginning, and this was the contest for the exploration and the expropriation of historical past. The first Southern Slavic writings, the Glebalite, the Cyrillic alphabet, came from the region of Saloniki. The center of the first Bulgarian state was located in Macedonia at the turn of the first millennia. The Tsar Samuel is both a hero of Macedonians and Bulgarians, and this is commemorated even nowadays. Uh, see the statues in uh, Skopje or the statue of Samuel in Sofia uh, bearing the Hungarian holy crown on his head. Uh, the most famous saints like Cyril and Methodius or Sveti Clement Ochritsky are also part of the common past, but the modern nation states vindicate them themselves and national libraries and universities also bear these names of famous uh, saints. By Sihlandarski, the famous Bulgarian historian of the Bulgarian revival was born in Bansko, Macedonia. Uh, Bulgarian and uh, Macedonian historians still have dispute over the ethnic affinity and political goals of Kocedelce, for example, whom we already mentioned, the organizer of the Ilinden revolt in 1903. And of course, you can see the commemorations in Skopje in these pictures, the, the two cents of Syria and Methodius, or Alexander, the statue of Alexander the Great of Macedons, the ancient uh, as a reference to the ancient past. Uh, the occupation of uh, public squares is very important in order to create national consciousness. So there will be some more pictures on statues erected recently uh, in the center of the capital city of North Macedonia. And even the and the style of the buildings resemble to the to the ancient past, to the supposed ancient past. So instead of appeasing over the common past, present state policies focus on its expropriation and, and separation, delimitation. History is a political tool, not only in foreign, but in internal relations as well. Bulgarians claim that the elements of Macedonian history are in fact uh, the part, and not even the peripheral part, of the history of the Bulgarian nation. Thus, Macedonian Slavs are linguistically and historically uh, connected to the Bulgarian nation. Uh, as the part of the national self-defense strategy, uh, the Macedonians go even further back in time erect huge statues of famous personalities in connection with the history of the Macedonian region, ancient Macedonia and the Macedonian state. And as we have discussed, there is a difference between these three terms. They claim that uh, they are the descendants 
of ancient Macedons who became Slavicized only later. And that way they are trying to separate themselves from Bulgarians and from Bulgarian history, historical traditions. But, by, but when doing this, um, the strategy brings the anger of Greeks because by positioning the Macedonian identity as opposed to the Bulgarian, the Macedonians hurt and expropriated elements of Greek identity too, at least as Greek perceived this. So virtually any choice for self-definition which tries to keep distance from the neighbors simply triggers opposition from another side. And that way, the formation of modern Macedonian self-identity not only angers Bulgarians, but Greeks at the same time, which put the Macedonian uh, ideologists and politicians in a very delicate and fragile situation. And the state cannot move further from being uh, in a stalemate, from being a buffer zone of, of histories and pasts. Um, and this is aggravated further by the fact that when they, they try to refer to regional identity as a key element of Macedonianness to oppose the pressure from the Bulgars or the Greeks, they immediately have to deal with the Albanian questions, which we have already discussed in the uh, news of the, in the beginning. If Albanians are considered as natural constituents, of the regional Macedonian identity, they have to be treated equally. And that is by the application of almost all government positions in the last decades. But if Macedonian is, is interpreted, uh, interpreted uh, in a narrower sense, meaning a Slavic language and being orthodox simply, this excludes at least one third of the country's population from this common set. And that way, uh, the politicians create a new fault line. And this is very problematic. And if the latter approach wins, that is the ethno-religious concept over a regional identity, this would lead to the destabilization of the country, uh, which would not be hindered by its opponents. Uh, when in uh, 1999, Macedonia allowed 40, 100,000 Albanian refugees to settle in Macedonia temporarily, uh, the GK organized a guerrilla warfare to dismember the country. It was only the NATO aid that saved the situation and hindered further escalation of the conflict. And however, this also urged for the necessity of the NATO membership, which we have already uh, discussed, uh, Greece uh, hindered several times, for internal security reasons. And that's why Macedonia uh, decided to give concessions to the Greeks in connection with the name of the state. Uh, but both this and the appeasement with the ethnic Albanians based on parity has strong political opposition, internal opposition as well. The, the internal Macedonian revolutionary, revolutionary organization, which is a Macedonian political party, uh, of course, with modern political thoughts. And it is a Bulgarian movement, still existing Bulgarian movement at the same time. And while rightist Bulgarians remained unsatisfied when US citizenship was allowed, for example, for those Macedonians who work or study in Bulgaria, uh, some circles found it uh, only too provocative as well. So, these were the main uh, findings I wanted to share with the audience and thank you very much for the uh, patience. Mm -hmm.